Hello, today I'm going to share my strategy that I've used to beat most of the strong players that I've played against for Century Spice Road. This is one of my favorite games right now, and the concept is very simple. You're buying these production cards that you can use to upgrade or modify the spices that you're holding, and use them to buy these cards that are worth points at the end of the game. And a big part of my strategy is thinking of the spices as having point values themselves. I think of the yellow, red, green, and brown spices as being worth 1, 2, 3, and 4 points each, respectively. Throughout this video, I'm going to talk about these spices having these point values, but just to clarify, what I'm really referring to is buying power. These spices are not really worth these values at the end of the game, but I think of them as having these point values because it helps me gauge how well I'm doing in the game, based on how much buying power I have. I'll talk more about the end game value of the spices towards the end of the video. For example, this card is worth 16 points and it costs four brown spices. So that's a perfect example of how the brown spice is equivalent to four points of buying power. And anytime I had a brown spice in my hand, I would think of it as, as if I am holding four points in my hand that I just haven't realized yet. So the goal is to make decisions that maximize the total amount of points that I have between the cards that I've purchased and the spices that I'm holding. The first phase of the game is about building yourself a strong engine by selecting good cards from this row. The first thing you need to know, and a lot of people don't know this, is that these trading cards can be played multiple times on a single turn. For instance, if I had six green spices, I could play this card twice on the same turn to convert it from six green to six brown. Another thing you want to be aware of is that there is a 10 spice limit for your holding. So if I had six brown spices, for instance, I could play this card six times to convert it from six brown to 12 green. However, then I would have to discard two green to get down to 10. With all that being said, I think the card that's most appealing to me right now is this two green to two brown card, because I could conceivably play this card five times on a single turn to convert 10 green to 10 brown, which is essentially gaining 10 points on a single turn. This card is similar, however, it's a little bit more restrictive in the sense that you need precisely three, six, or nine green spices in order to play it. Whereas this one, you can play with two, four, six, eight, or ten. For my opponent's first turn, he took the card that produces one yellow and one red. And now he, he doesn't have the ability to take this one on his turn. So I'm going to start off by producing two yellow spices, which is basically my way of sort of passing in the hopes that he'll buy this one and then I'll have to discard less to get to the card that I really want. However, he does the same thing producing two yellow, so I'm going to take that card that I want now. And he's going to take the other one. Between these two cards, I think I prefer this one. This card actually has a higher return in the sense that if you had 10 yellow, this card could give you five green, whereas this card could give you six green. But this card is just so much more flexible that I'm going to take this card on this occasion. Now I'm going to take the brown to two green. And these cards work together very well in the sense that if I had, say, four green spices, I could convert it from four green to four brown and then immediately put four brown through this one on my next turn to create eight green. So those two cards chain together pretty nicely. And now this is a card that I really want. It converts two yellow to two red, but I could conceivably play it five times on a single turn. This is the first opportunity that I have to take this card and I'm going to take it again for the same reasons I took this one. Going to take that. And now again, I'm going to take this card and gain two. And 
And now I'm kind of nearing the end of the development phase, I would say. I, I, I'm i very happy with the cards that I have in my hand so far. I have the ability to consume any color. I can consume green, yellow, brown, yellow, red, and I can produce almost every color, brown, green, and red. I'm going to take the first card again, so now I can produce all four colors pretty easily. And now I also have six yellow spices in my hand, so I can play this card and gain six points if I wanted to. Now I'm at the point of the game where I'm shifting my focus to production, and there are a couple different goals I have for production. Uh, ideally, I want to be playing cards like this, where I can be gaining a lot of points on a single turn, but I'm also going to try and gear my strategy towards getting a point card that is the best deal. In this case, this is the card that is probably the best deal in the sense that it costs 12 points worth of spices, but you're getting 14 points plus a gold token that's worth three. So it's like you're spending 12 points and gaining 17 points for a net gain of plus five. I'm going to start off by playing this card to convert two yellow to two red, which is pretty strong. I'm basically gaining six points on one turn. And now this sets me up where I could play this card twice if I wanted to. However, I'm going to play it just once this time because I am trying to get this card right now. And now I'm going to play this one twice to get some of the extra yellow spices I need. I chose to play it a second time so I could have some extra yellow spices left over when I buy this. And also because I'm gaining an extra point basically by playing it a second time. And now I have enough that I can officially buy this card. So I'm going to do it. And a big part of my strategy for buying cards is that I don't want to just have the cost of the card, but I want to make sure that I always have something nice left over as well. In this case, I have four yellow spices left over, which is nice because I can continue producing by using those four yellow spices. Whereas if I had spent everything and didn't have anything left over, then my production would be pretty slow at that point because I'm basically starting from scratch. So you not only want to buy a card that provides a nice bonus for you, which is usually the gold card, but you also want to make sure that you're left off with something where you can continue producing quickly. And now I'm actually going to rest because I want to get the two yellow and, and play this card again for a big gain. So that's what I'm going to do. And looking at the cards, I would be okay with getting any of these three cards. This one provides three points extra for the gold token. This one costs 11 in total, but I would get 12 points plus another point. So that's plus two. And this one costs 10 for 12 points as well. So these three cards are all reasonable choices for me right now. I'm not sure exactly which card I'm going to get first. So I'm going to play this one twice just to increase my value. It does set me up nicely because I have some cards that I can take any of the three colors I'm producing on this turn. And now I'm going to produce one green spice. This sets me up where I could go for either of these two cards. I could purchase this one now, or I could play one of these upgrade cards to give myself four brown where I could take this too. But my opponent plays a 
card that allows him to have six brown spices now. So I'm no longer interested in going for this one. I don't want to convert to four brown and, and not be able to buy anything. So I'm going to make a move that's a little bit more passive. I'm taking the card and gaining one, one point. The reason I did this is because if he's going to buy this card, I want to buy this card when it has the gold token on it. So that's kind of why I'm playing slow right now. But my opponent is kind of doing the same thing. I feel like that might be intentional of him trying to, to make me take the silver or delay buying this card. So I'm going to play it slow again. And again, I'm, I'm continuing to make a move that is fairly slow, just plus two points, because I, I want to get this card, but I want to wait for him to buy this first. And now he finally buys that card, so I'm going to buy the one that I want as well. And now you can see that, again, I'm left over with something pretty nice. I have three brown spices, so I could put them all through here to gain six green. And that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to play this one three times as well to gain the maximum potential. And looking at these cards, this is the card that is most interesting to me because it costs 10 and you could get 12 plus 3 for a gain of plus 5. This card is okay too. You're spending 14 to gain 16. So ideally I'm going to go for this card if he doesn't take it first, but I'm going to make sure I leave my, my options open to take either of them. So that's what I do by playing that card. But I could always upgrade to green to get the the 12 point card. But he does take the 12 point card first, so now I'm going to take the 15. Now I'm going to rest. At this point, this card is worth one point extra from the silver coin and all the rest of these are are even trades so it doesn't really matter too much what card i'm going for this time i think the main goal is producing as much value as i can with the actual cards that i'm playing i think the best thing that i can do is playing this card three times to gain three points it also is nice because now I have nine yellow, which I can use to play one of my other two cards. But now I'm going to play this card four times to gain eight points, which should help me set myself ahead as, as well. And at this point, I don't necessarily know which point card I'm targeting. But the main thing is that I made a move that gained me a lot of points in terms of the value of the spices. And I can sort of figure out later what card I want to buy. But the important thing is I'm going to have some options later on with all the, the cards that I have for production. I'm deciding to upgrade one yellow to one red and call it an end there. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to play this card three times, but I need nine red spices. And now I have enough that I can buy this card for the silver token. And just like before, I'm left off with four brown spices, which is nice because I can play it here four times to gain eight green. And then that's setting me up 
later to play the green into one of these two cards. I chose to play this card four times. You'll notice that I'm not really losing value by playing it the fourth time because, you know, even if I'm just converting to green to brown and red, it's still, you know, a fair trade, six to six, even if I have to discard a red. So I'm okay with playing that card the maximum number of times. And now I'm at a point where I can see that I can win the game by buying these two cards, and that's what I'm going to do. He doesn't have the ability to produce a card on his next turn, and he was the player that went first, so I can buy these two cards and end the game with six cards. Another thing I'll mention is that while I'm playing the game, I am keeping a running total of how many points my opponent has. At this point, he has... 78 points in terms of cards and I have 58 points so I know that with these two cards I'll be able to overtake him. And I'm the second player to go in this game so that ends the game and I do end up beating him by seven points. Another thing I should mention is that when you are in the end game part of the game Unlike in the beginning where I buy a card and I want to have lots of spices left over, when I'm buying cards at the end, I don't really want to have spices left over because the spices lose value at the end of the game. The red, green, and brown spices are each worth one point at the end, whereas the yellow is worth one, zero points at the end. So that was a part of my strategy as well, was to spend almost all of my spices at the end to end the game and kind of maximize the potential of the spices that I was holding. So that is my strategy for Century Spice Road. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching.